Last week, Bob Chapek was fired from Disney. Well, he wasn't really fired, but he kind of was. He's fired. And Bob Iger is back. God damn it. Uh, there could have been a GTA game starring Eminem. That would have been fucking wild. Uh, and uh, Witcher 3 is getting a next gen update. We also have the MPD numbers. So come over to twitch.tv slash lonercast and watch us record this baby live where we talk about all this stuff. And if you can't join us live, which you probably didn't because I'm posting this after we've recorded it live already, you know, just go to uh, podcast services and look up Last Week in Games. Follow us on YouTube at lonercast and twitch.tv slash lonercast. We love you. Ties out last night. That movie's fucking good. Was it? It's a great movie. If you've never seen it, you should watch it. It's good. Never seen it. It's good. It's not on Netflix yet, though, which is annoying. So I had to rent it. I wanted to watch it before the new one comes out, you know, because I want to see it. It's got a uh, Daniel Craig in it, which is why I made that post about his eyes today on Facebook. I don't know if you saw that. Mm-hmm. I did not. I don't have a Facebook. The, oh yeah, that's right. I just posted that Daniel Craig has the best eyes in Hollywood, and no one can change my life. My, my my life my mind your life <laughs> no one can change your life and i i Not actually you. i actually stand by that um all that is being he, said is he, he's an eye actor he's an eye actor all that being said my name is jake that is nick hello boyos <laughs> we're doing the show i just decided right now we're doing That's the show it. are you cool with that <laughs> how do you feel about this I was going to give you a middle name, too. I was going to say Nick Bob Sapon, you know? Cause we're That's gonna be, pretty good. We're going to be talking about the Bobs today. Dude, who's, whose middle name is Bob? I mean, I'm sure people have the middle name Robert. Would, no, Robert's one thing. I don't think anyone's actual legal name is Bob. You don't think anybody's actual? No, they're all my Roberts. Son is, my son is going to be named Bob. They're all Roberts, you know? That no, go fuck by that. Bob. No. Like those, it, those are Robs, all right. If my, if my name was or Rob Roberts, if my name was Robert, like why the uh, f- who the fuck would choose to go by Bob? Out of all the names you can go by with Robert, you know, you got Rob, um, you got Bert, Bert, mm-hmm. you got Bob. That's kind of it. But <laughs> you got Rob and Bert and Robbie, Robbie. It's a good one, Bobby. Well, you don't want to go Bobby. Bobby's better than Bob. I, I don't think, think so. I think it is. I'd rather be Bobby Any, than Bob. Anytime I think of Bobby, I think of Bobby. Hey, Bobby. You know. I think of Bobby Lee, you know, the comedian. No. You don't know him? He used to be on Matt TV. Whatever. You didn't have cable. I didn't Matt, have Matt Actually, TV. Matt, Matt TV was on Fox, I think. So you, you would have. Actually, also, Matt TV was bad. So it had its moments. Mm, I'm sure. Just yeah. like SNL had its moments. Yeah, SNL just had more moments. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. SNL's kind of trash. Yeah, but it had it has some good moments. Yeah. I often think of that. Bring on down to Homelessville. Exactly. Oh, I often mm-hmm. think of the sketch with uh, Adam Driver, where he, where he's old man HR Pickens, and he shows up. I don't know that one. He shows up as an old man and he's like, I am HR Pickens. And he's, uh, he's, it's like, uh, bring your father to work day to like, or to school to like, to school. And he's like, I, I'm I a have... oil baron <laughs> and I kill the enemies. It's so good. It's, it's classic. It's a good one. I have, I have, think, I think I've seen that one. It's a good one. It's a classic one. All the, yeah, like you said, you all the Lonely Island, Island stuff, classic stuff. Yeah, Lonely Island's great. There's there's some good SNL. Sweaty balls. Come on now. Sweaty balls. I like uh, uh, Bag of Broken Glass. I like that one. Mm. Uh, bag of venomous, venomous, venomous Vipers. Uh, <clears throat> bag of Nails. That's a good one. Any sketch with uh, the guy that looks like you. What's his name? The guy who did Barry. I love oh, him. He's my favorite. That looks like me. That did Bill, Barry. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Any any sketch with him is good. Okay, yeah, they're, they're all good. Every sketch with him. I guess I kind of do look like Bill Hader, don't I? <laughs> you totally do. Put your put your hands like 
Like he does what Hold he on. does. Hold on. Stefan or it. whatever. Do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you look just like him. You look just like him. Bill Hader had this sketch where he pretended to be this old reporter and he'd be like, uh, what's, uh, oh, what's happening oh. here? <laughs> I know, I know the one. I'm in the face with the microphone. Yeah, that's it. That's the face. That's the thumbnail too. I'll, I'll put you in the thumbnail and then like a picture of Bob Iger in the corner, you know? Bob Iger? Well, we're going to be talking about Bob Iger okay. at some okay. point, you know? Anyway, Knives Out, really good. It's weird how much I look like this dude. Bob Iger? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, Bob Iger. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what's new? What's okay. going on with you? How, how's, uh, how are things? Dude, things are okay. That's it. Nice. Moving on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, things are good. We had, we had Friendsgiving. That's because, true. Uh, Thanksgiving is boring and... You go to Thanksgiving because you're obligated to. Yeah. Friendsgiving is all about friends, and you don't have to come if you don't want, but all your friends are going to be there. So we get together a week before Thanksgiving and do a little Thanksgiving of our own. Mm-hmm. Um, it was fantastic. People mm-hmm. got drunk, like really drunk, really early, um, which is good. That's the other Ooh. fun thing about Friendsgiving is like you get drunk at Thanksgiving but it's not like mm-hmm. you're actively getting drunk with everyone. Everyone's kind of getting uh, right. dr- drunk to themselves and hiding it because it's just not, like, yeah. I need mm-hmm. to get drunk to like ignore my family members. But Friendsgiving, we're doing like beer bongs, you know? Uh, we didn't do any of that, but actually... We didn't do that. If it no. happened, it, no one would question it, you know? that. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. After a certain, after the dinner is after, served. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. As, yeah, as long as it's after the dinner served yeah. and, like, everybody's eaten. Although a few people did know. not wait. <laughs> a few well, there are, there are good reasons for that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, we, so. had a, we had a friend who wanted to get out of, like, family photos, so he got really drunk before it. It was great. Hilarious. Yeah. Good reason. Uh, good hilarious. reason right there. Avoid your actual family on Friendsgiving Day. That's true. I agree. So. That, I agree with that too. Um, yes. Nick, we got a stack show today, though. It's stacked. I don't think so. I think you're lying to everybody. Uh, no, it's stacked. There's... You should stop. You should stop lying to everybody. I'm not lying. This is. We have a very interesting show, show today. Stacked. It's stacked. It is stacked with one major thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stacked. No, we got this. It's going to be sweet. Let's get it's into this. Sweaty. It's gonna this be show is sweaty. sweaty. Like the like the sweaty. SNL just like, skit. Just like the balls. Yes, yeah, exactly. Sweaty balls. Classic, classic mm-hmm. skit. Uh, classic, good stuff. Good and think stuff. of like all the people who have come from SNL too. Like just a an insane amount. Like not not many people came from Mad TV, but SNL. No. Like a lot of SNL. People. Yeah. Well, Conan O'Brien was one of them. And then a whole lot of people came from Conan O'Brien as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, just talking about the writers. Yeah. Conan, Bob Odenkirk. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. He was a writer on SNL. Um, Fucking Bill Hader. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon came from SNL. Tina Fey. Tina Fey. Alec Baldwin. Uh, Alec. uh, Yeah. We'll just go down the whole list. Yeah. Uh, Uh, Amy Poehler. Yeah. Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Bill Murray. Bill Murray. It's crazy. Adam Sandler. All the it's crazy. Guys. Adam Sandler. All the guys. They're still All pumping them. them out. They're still pumping them out to this. Uh, Pete Davidson. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's crazy how many people like now. I It's like, oh, that guy's cool. He, where is he from? SNL. Oh, really? That's still going? Yeah. People kinda, really like Bo crazy. and Yang as well. He came from SNL. He's kind of blown up lately. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Anyway, let's get into the titties. Uh, these are some tidbits of news that we feel are worth talking about. Uh, I have one to add that's not on here, by the way. So at the end, I'll yeah, add. yeah, throw it on there. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm. Can you? I'm excited. Is, about is it. there any way you can like stream videos? Uh, it's kind of hard from this setup. Okay, well honest. then, never mind. Never mind. That's fine. Okay. I, I still have one. Okay. It's more of like a, a bulletin. Okay. 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 All um. Right. First, first thing here. I think a, a lot of these titties are kind of fun. I added these because they, they're kind of fun titties. I think. 
uh-huh. like this first titty here. This guy yeah. named Dino Sin Singel Singel. Uh, I don't think that's his real name. Di- Di- that's his name. That's his. It's on his birth certificate. It's, his, it's on his birth. Shit, man. Who Dr- driver's See, license? And I'm wondering who's naming their kids Bob. I know. You well, know, Dino Dino Singel is way better than Bob. That's true. Yes. Yeah, that is true. So he's a streamer, and he played seven Souls games in a row. And mm-hmm. beat them without being hit once. I just threw that on there because that's fucking crazy. That's the that, craziest that's shit. The, that's the number of Souls games that are out, right? Yeah. He beat all of them, I think. Yeah, right? Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, Sekiro. Sekiro. I don't know. There's um, something else I'm missing, I guess. Uh, Demon Souls. Demon Souls. Probably, probably demons' souls. Is, is that all of them? I think that's that's all the mainline ones, right? Like okay. that's that's all the like actual FromSoft games. I don't know. Because mm-hmm. then there's even more when you get into like Neo and stuff, but those aren't FromSoft games. But yeah, I just thought that was right. crazy. I'm like, dude, I can't even. Is, be, it took yeah. me like three years without, to beat Bloodborne. Without getting hit is ridiculous. Yeah. Just for one what, of like, those games. I mean, like, what? What ha- did he restart the game, or did he restart his whole thing? Like, he gets hit once, and then he's like, "Fuck." I now think I gotta so. Re- go he's... back to Demon's Souls and start over, or did he just start streaming and playing? And was just like, you know, if it I get hit on the that's article, and the stream on the article I found this on, it said it took like thirteen tries or something. Oh, okay. So it wasn't a one and done sort of situation, but thirteen, it's. Still fucking impressive. He still did it though, and like that's crazy. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And the the worst part is at the end, I'm like, this dude has no life. There's no way this man has anything going for him. And then at the end, his girlfriend comes in and gives him a hug. I'm like, this man gets a girlfriend, and he's just wow. playing Dark Souls all the time. That's the a, that's a winner right how, there. You how, keep you hold on to that. How is I know lovely she loud. I'm like, what is this? What, what, what? Oh, all right, I'm getting a little incelly over here. I should stop. Um, <laughs> Microsoft shelved uh, the Game Pass streaming box because it was too expensive. Remember, we talked about that a few weeks ago. Uh, a few weeks ago, we were talking about how like we saw the prototype up on top of Phil Spencer's thing. And then before that, right, right, we right, were right. talking mm-hmm. about how they were trying to come up with some sort of stick for the streaming stuff. Well, apparently, yeah. it's not happening. I think it will happen, but I think they've just like put it off for a while. Um, okay. I so Phil Spencer in an interview was sort of talking about like they couldn't figure out a way to do it without keeping it under like a hundred and fifty bucks. And he's like, if we're gonna do that, we might as well just put the uh, Series S on sale. This was the this was the thing that they they wanted to compete with like Google. Stadia, right? This was this was going to compete with Google Stadia. I mean, compete with Google. <laughs> I mean, I mean that you, you know what I'm saying though. You know where I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah. I think they saw Google Stadia and went, "Well, fuck! It didn't work for Google." And and they're like, mm, "We're out." It's, they, if Google can't do it, we're not going to do it. Somebody else know. can waste their money because that's what it is in the day and age that we live in, where internet is not free or very cheap uh, or regulated uh, uh, to not be a monopoly, then I I don't think the streaming shit's going to work. Yeah, it could work for some people, but I think that's also why he's like, if you're going to buy one of these stream things, you probably don't want to spend more than 20 bucks on it. And he's like, well, if we can't figure out a way to keep it under that, you might as well just go buy the series S. Um, which is 200 yeah. bucks and apparently they're doing Christmas Black Friday sales where they're like 150 bucks. Like, Holy shit. Like insane. Good shit. So Good shit. Go get yourself a goddamn Series S, huh? Uh I I mean or don't. I mean, you get don't. yourself a PC. Get yourself a PC if you can afford it. Do, Otherwise, yeah. if yeah, yeah, if you can't afford it then yeah, what are you I doing? I would recommend to most people like Go get yourself a Series S before a PC. Like, unless you have that kind of money and you're in the the space. If not, yeah. like that, the Series S is a Series right. S and a PlayStation. Like, you're you're good. You're set. Oh yeah. Like that's oh, all yeah. you need. Uh, getting into PC gaming is hard. 
it's expensive. It took me forever. It it's it is expensive, but once you know, once you do it, it feels good. But it's because it's, it better fucking feel good. You spent like at least two grand on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. But now, now you're in it. Oh you know yeah, I mean, there's, there's no leaving now. I spent too much money. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, yeah, but like, you can upgrade it, right? I guess you could upgrade to the next PlayStation, but who wants to deal with all those fucking um, scalpers when you're buying the next PlayStation Six or whatever? Yeah, hopefully the PlayStation Six doesn't have that issue. But I, I could see it. It shouldn't have the supply chain issues that we're having now. And actually, I you know I've gone to GameStop a bunch, right? Uh, just mm-hmm. to there's been a lot of games that came out, Bayonetta. Yeah. Uh, Sparks of Hope, um, new Pokemon, new Pokemon, God of War. No, and each time I went in there, they had PS5s, so they're on shelves again. Oh, they like they actually sure ha- they had them there, so yep, they're two years later, baby. Th- two years later, th- nearly three. Yeah, is it nearly three? I think so. Nearly three years later, I guess it is. It's two, it's two. Um, Anyway, this is a fun piece of news here as well. Uh, after GTA 3, there was almost a GTA movie starring Eminem. <laughs> uh, so this was after, like, if you remember when GTA 3 came out, that, that was like uh-huh. right after uh, or right around the time as 8 Mile. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Which was like the big... Pre- which is pretty much just GTA anyway. Yeah, totally. And I'm <clears throat> sure some exec saw that and was like, hey... Get this kid in the movie. And Eminem was like signed on to do it as well. Um, but then the, uh, I guess like the execs, the guys who, the guys at Rockstar were like, we don't want to do a movie. And then that <laughs> didn't happen. So, <laughs> yeah. Would you have liked that to is, seen a uh, Eminem know, movie? That is, it, that is an interesting little fun fact there. Uh, piece of news, little titty. Um, and Eminem, I, I feel like Eminem, was good in Eight Mile because it was his life. I don't fi- think he would be a good actor. Well, just I, in general, I wonder you know? if this would have like changed the trajectory of this man's career. You know, it could have, but does he really need it? I mean, he's doing fine. He's doing fine, dude. More than fine, I'm sure. But maybe if like GTA came out as a movie and it was successful, like we'd have actor M out here. You know. Yeah. Like two success, two big successful movies back to back like that. Mm -hmm. But he kind of did eight mile and didn't do anything after that. So, yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't need to. I think he's probably, he's probably a good actor. You know, his music videos, he's always doing weird shit and dressing in drag or whatever he does. So, yeah. I mean, he's a performer, you know, he's going to performers going to perform. He also, he was in the, did you ever see the interview? With, yes, uh, yes, I did. Seth Was Rogen. he in that? Was he in that? There's I don't the, remember him being there's in that. There's the one scene where James Franco is interviewing Eminem, and Eminem's uh-huh. like, I'm gay. And he's like, What was that? <laughs> he's like, Yeah, I'm gay. I, I think it, yeah. I've been gay the whole remember. time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. Pretty cool. That is good. That is good. Um this is a big piece of news for you here, Nick. Uh yes, it is. And for you. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll finally play this game. Uh, Witcher 3, the next gen update is coming in my mouth December 14th. Shit, man. And it's completely free to those that own the Witcher 3 so, anyway. So if I went and bought the Witcher 3 for like five bucks right now, uh huh, I could get that update? Uh-huh. I should do that. 100%. You should do that. That game's always. Yeah, I would. Uh, it's it's yeah. It's up. It's there. Um, it's always but, there. But you know what this means, Jake? Mm-hmm. It means that our Star Wars spoiler cast is going to have to wait because we're going to do <laughs> The Witcher Three replay with Jake Woods. Um, I'm down to do it. I'm down to stream the game. I just need one caveat though. Like I just need to finish God of War, please. <laughs> No, well, I mean, if you can finish it before December fourteenth, <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I'll play that instead of uh, 
Callisto Protocol. Fuck it. Yeah. I'll do that. You convince me. Oh, yeah, me. dude. You convince cool. me. I'm in. And it'll give you a reason to come over and yeah. hang out again, you yeah. know? So. I'm in. 100%. I'm down. I'm down. Uh, how long is how long is The Witcher? Like, how long do you, do you think it, it takes? Depends on what you get. It depends on what you want out of it. Like, if you, you just run, if you're burning through it, probably like 20, 25 hours. Okay, I like to play like, uh, not necessarily burning through it, but like some side quests, not all side quests. You know, that's the kind of gamer I am. And then you're probably looking at like 30, 40 hours, maybe. I've I've always but, been the kind of gamer but, where it's like, oh, that caught my eye, and I'll do that. So and I don't okay, go out of so, my way a lot. So there is a lot of <laughs> oh, that that caught my eye, and for me, I completed it, hundred percent of it. DLC, every DLC, everything, one hundred and twenty-five hours. So uh, oh, <laughs> and that's and that's like that's like picking all the the there's a buttload of question marks. It's just like a monster nest or a treasure chest or um, a place of power. And I've visited all of those question marks. And so literally seen the whole map and it took me 120 hours. 14th Um, is right when I get back from Disneyland. So, Oh dude, perfect. Let's go. I know I'm doing a playthrough. Danielle's probably going to do a play. You're going to play it again, huh? I want to play it again. Oh Oh, yeah. They have new DLC and whatnot on it. I I've been we, waiting for I this. I say we all play at the same time and we'll just stream us talking to each other. We can do that. Yeah. We can figure something out. I, I could do the little the picture in picture thing that the PlayStation has. Have your little picture in the corner while I'm playing <laughs> on it and then stream that. Just eat my data. There you go. Yeah. Just completely destroy yours and my data. Yeah. I yeah. I would do that. Fuck it. Sounds fun. Fuck it. Let's fucking do something. We got to do something. If I could play Flight Simulator, I could play. I could do that. The picture in picture yeah. streaming. <laughs> uh, if last... you can play Flight Simulator, you can play The Witcher. Yeah, yeah. Especially since I flew from China to uh, China. to uh, Colorado, so that was that's pretty wild. Real time. Wow, really? Yep. That's pretty good. That's no. a long fucking time. <laughs> I did. God not, damn. Did that's like sixteen that. hours. That's could like you, could you half. Of, that's like half of the time of playing The Witcher. Yeah, crazy shit. I've always thought about starting like a podcast where like mm-hmm. you, you have to have like the legit setup though, where it actually looks like a cockpit, and uh-huh. then and then you have guests on, and you go from like one destination to another. So it's like co- cars and coffee. Yeah, but you're on a plane. But it's like it's like yeah, <laughs> Get like Harrison Ford in there. Uh, Plain planes and paninis, paninis in a plane. <laughs> planes and peanuts. Oh, there you go. Just eat peanuts as we're going. Pe- peanuts, yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you get a different sponsor of peanuts every every week. Indeed. Uh, last titty here for me. Nick's got another one. He's adding. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Volition is uh Volition. To, to become part of Gearbox after Saints Row failed to meet expectations. Damn. Not necessarily sure exactly what this means um i don't know if that means like volition is like completely dead or like if volition is just now a subsidiary of gearbox and they're still going to be doing stuff or what that really means but uh makes Um, sense you know what it means you know what it means jake it means that gearbox is going to ruin another game that's all it means. <laughs> I think Volition did that just fine by themselves. Yeah, they did all right. They did all right. I don't know. You you see like Gearbox take anything over and then it kind of stops being a thing or stops having that life. I, I think Gearbox just takes too much control over over their crap. What's a, what's an example of what you're saying here? Um, do you ever hear of the Penn and Teller VR game? <laughs> No. I bet you have. I bet you haven't. They they have that. Do you have ever hear of a, a game called Duke Nukem Forever? I've uh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Okay, so that one's there. Um, and they just recently took over the guys that uh, <laughs> that make Risk of Rain as well. Uh oh. So, 
uh, kind of concerning, but you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. But you know, they're all owned by what embracer group and embracer group owns everyone. Mm-hmm. So owns every, everyone, everyone is gearbox now and they're all going to be making SpongeBob games in a few years here. Uh, yeah. What's what's your what's your titty here? What what you got? Okay, this is more for me because I'm excited about it. So there, there's a new Need for Speed game coming out called Need for Speed Unbound, and the yep. art style looks fantastic. They just released a speed race gameplay trailer where they show three minutes of just it seems like snippets of racing and like controls and stuff like that and customization. Um, check this trailer out. Looks. Oh. Sick as hell. It looks like old school Need for Speed games. Okay, I'm I'm checking it out. Uh, check it. It's three minutes long. Need for Speed on Bound. Yes. It up. Uh, oh, right here. 4K gameplay. I will speed race. Speed it, race gameplay. In the edited version, I can overlay some of this gameplay here. Yeah, go for it. There we go. I'm kind of skipping through it, if I'm being honest. Skip through it. It's fine. So what makes you hyped about it? What what looks different about this than um, anything else? Ooh, the, Customization. I like the, 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 the sort art of... art style. Uh, the sort of uh, uh, Spider-Man... Yeah, To the Spider-Verse, exactly. like, drawings exactly. around the cars and stuff. Mm-hmm. The characters all kind of look are in that style as well. So all the, all the players and the, and the humans are all kind of that style. Um, that it really reminds me of like an underground or a most wanted. Um, and the little flare, the like Spider-Man into the spider verse flares look really good too. Yeah. It almost uh, has, it almost has like a uh, burnout vibes to it. Almost. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's the same team, right? Like, I don't know. They stopped making uh, Burnout games because they just wanted to exclusively make Need for Speed, I think. I have no idea. Yeah, that looks cool as hell. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, though. I, I do uh, have my reservations about Burnout Oh, abs- as Speed. you should. As you should. Did it have a date? I didn't catch that. December 2nd. Oh, my God. No one's talking about yeah. that. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's why I have brought, had to bring it up. Oh, well, fuck Witcher. We're playing Need for Speed, <laughs> baby. <laughs> you wish. Uh, that's pretty I cool, though. I wouldn't let you get away with that. I like, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks neat. Yeah. Just a little spotlight. Uh, all right. Let's get into the, the big juicy news here. Juicy. Mm-hmm. Should we start with the MPD or just do the Bob Iger thing? Right. Let's just that? do the Bob Iger thing. Yeah, let's do it. And we'll slow it down with the MPD numbers. Oh, dude, I have so much to say about this Bob Iger shit, though. So. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna be right back. Um, <laughs> Nick's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you go on ahead, though. I'll uh, I'll be back in like 30 minutes. <laughs> so here is the big news. All right, it's not mm-hmm. necessarily video game news, but it is because it affects video games and, um, but Bob Chapek, who was the CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Walter uh, Disney. Yeah. Who took over for former CEO Bobbert Iger. <laughs> Bob Bobbert Iger, yes. That uh, is his name. Well, Bob Chapek just stepped down and Bob Iger is coming back in. Um and this <laughs> is big news. Um mm-hmm. For uh, a myriad of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, a lot of people don't like Bob Chapek and what he's been doing, and right. a lot of people. Have you have you been to the Marvel Land in in uh, California Adventure recently? It's bad. I'll be there in December, so. Mm, well, you'll see. <clears throat> well, it is funny you mention that. I've been talking about how my trip to Disneyland in December is sort of a farewell tour for me. Where I'm like, mm. this is going to be like the last time I go there for a long while until they get their shit together. Because mm. from everything I've heard, from like, you know, Genie Plus or whatever, Lightning Lanes, all that shit, not paying their employees enough. Uh, it just seems like a whole clusterfuck over there. Uh, and right. 
the the shareholders agree um to the point where really? um uh just a couple weeks ago jim kramer you know he's the guy that like throws his mugs on the ground he's like ah the stock market yeah 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 you know yeah uh, yeah he, he was on his show and he's like they got to get rid of bob chapek because he's destroying this company and there's so many uh different reasons for that but i, I want to get your i want to get your uh take on it before i go on a huge diatribe here um it's really interesting that they're bringing back someone that uh yeah right that already worked there like what ha what happened there like is, are they just like hey man uh could you come back for a minute because we got to get rid of this guy or was it like did he come back and went hey i'd like to work and they're like oh perfect timing dude because um we got you like i i want to know what ha why why didn't they just go with somebody else um i i have theories for that but go on um i'm i'm excited because chapek seems to be uh not the best he seems to kind of just float and just do whatever it doesn't seem like he cares a whole lot and uh every star wars thing that comes out you know it's it always has some sort of problems and i don't know if that's because of like kathleen kennedy making decisions or if it's like bob jpeg making decisions that are are like yeah no we're gonna announce this game we're not gonna announce this movie but the movie's never gonna come out we're gonna announce this movie uh but we're gonna change everything about it and uh, you're not gonna hear about that ever again or uh, i don't know man it's we need a shake up in disney i think and i think this is only a good thing yeah um to, to go back to what you were saying about why bob Iger, why bring back mm -hmm. bobby Iger? Uh, uh -huh. i think you know he decided long ago i think probably that he wanted to retire you know he's i think in his 60s and rich as hell because he was the mm -hmm. fucking ceo of disney and i think before that uh -huh. he was like the ceo of like espn so like the dude is doing just fine um, right and i think he selected chapek because before chapek was um the ceo of disney he was the head of the uh disney parks so uh -huh. you know he was kind of in line to take over and with all the shit that's happened throughout it Bob Iger has been doing interviews where he's like, I don't agree with that decision. That is not a right. good decision. And I, I think, and you know, I think Disney or Disney, I think Bob Iger, uh, Papa Iger, as I like mm -hmm. to call him, uh, loves Disney and it's like his pride and joy and he wanted to see it do well. So much so that if you remember when he stepped down, he, he uh, remained as head of the board for a year just to have a peaceful transition to make sure things went well well uh -huh. that, that transition happened and things kind of went to shit and uh i think he he kind of feels partly responsible for it um, okay and he wants to write the ship i think and i i don't think bob Iger is gonna be there very long um no there was actually a guy in line to take over for Bob Chapek because Bob Chapek was doing such a poor job and Bob Chapek fired him, which is hilarious. Oh. So I think Bob Iger is in there. I think uh, the board members and the shareholders came together. They had a, an emergency shareholder meeting a, a couple weeks ago. And this okay. is probably why. And um, I think they were like, Hey, let's give it to Bob Iger. He'll write the ship. And this will be the only time you'll see this in history. I think Nick, where a company fires their CEO and replaces their CEO and it seems unstable, but the share the shares went up because of it. Because mm, people love because, Bob Iger that much. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody hates Bob Chapek or whatever. It, yeah, he's a he's a beloved CEO. So here's mm. a here's a little a little history lesson, all right. If I could have the floor for a moment. A little You've had the floor this whole time. I, I know. I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking it some more. <laughs> That's fine. I don't have a whole lot to say. Um, so here's a little history lesson for you, okay? Um, uh -huh. 
I'm I'm a I'm a bit of a Disney adult, a, a little bit of one. Uh, uh, I, I, I love I love Disney. I'm not weird though. I don't like live on a Disney. Pr- that's weird as fuck. Okay, I don't have like Mickey Mouse is hanging up in my. Mm-hmm. That's weird. But I do like Disney, and um, mm-hmm. but uh, back in the day, all right, mm-hmm. there was a guy named Michael Eisner, and people kind of liked Michael Eisner as CEO for a minute. He was kind of in mm-hmm. charge of the uh, what was called the the Disney Animation Renaissance, right? With uh-huh. uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, Lion King, you know these things were huge, and he was a part of that. But then towards the tail end of that, um, he opened California Adventure, which people fucking hated that park. People thought it was terrible. Uh, he opened Euro Disney, which was also a failure of a park. Uh, the movies were going downhill in the early 2000s. If you remember, it was like Chicken Run. Like who uh-huh, fucking remembers yeah. Chicken Run? Hey, man, uh, I remember Chicken Run. <clears throat> like no one remembers that shit. I remember it just because Zach Braff was the guy. Uh, he was the voice, if you remember. Uh, of the chicken? Yeah, he was the chicken. I don't remember that. Yeah, but, but I believe it. <clears throat> things were going downhill. They had this partnership with Pixar, but it was waning. Steve Jobs was like, I don't even want to be with Disney um, because Michael Eisner sucks. Uh, mm-hmm. So then Michael Eisner stepped down and Bob Iger took over. During the okay. Bob Iger years is when we got the deal with Pixar. Now Pixar own, is owned by Disney. Uh, okay. Marvel was purchased under Bob Iger. Um, Star Wars was purchased under Bob Iger. Fox was purchased mm-hmm. under Bob Iger. And not to just be like, this is a cynical, like uh, he buys everything. But on top of that, he also took California Adventure, fixed it. People love California Adventure now. Uh, Mm -hmm. He took Euro Disney and turned it into Paris Disney. People kind of like Paris Disney now. Uh, He opened Shanghai Disney, which is a huge success. Um, He also, on top of all of that, it wasn't just known properties that were doing huge business. It was things like Frozen that were doing huge business. You know, like he was just killing the game, you know? Right. I think when it comes to uh, owners and operators of... Disney, it's going to go Walt Disney as like the number one granddaddy of of Disney and then Bob Iger. Like those are mm-hmm. going to be the two that people talk about. Like do you think he's going to have a statue next to Disney? Like it it's totally possible, but it's because Bob Iger has a respect for the foundation of what Disney built that he mm-hmm. would never do that cuz he knows that the right. foundation is always and forever will be that mouse, you know? Right. And, and he respects that. Uh Chapek, on the other hand, uh, didn't respect that. I mean, just recently in a in an interview, he talked about how animation isn't really that important when it comes to Disney, and they want to change mm. the framework of what Disney's about oh. and lean more into like maybe some adult content on Disney Plus. And well, that's fine, right? Uh, it's fine as long as you have the base the other line stuff. Yeah, of mm-hmm. like this is for kids first, and then the other right. stuff comes later. Right. Right. And I think Bob Mm -hmm. Iger was always good about that. It's like we have, you know, these Fox properties, but we have frozen, you know, like that's that's our key. That's our Mm. key to the kingdom. And that's how you keep bringing more and more people in is by getting them as kids. And if you move away from that, not great. So then on top of that, with Bob Chapek, uh, Bob Chapek was uh, in charge of the Disney parks and he's only been there for like two, three years. Right. Uh, and in that time, he's uh, crumbled the parks, so to speak. And he d- to give him a little bit of uh, benefit of the doubt here, he did take over during COVID, which is a terrible time to take over. But yeah. people are complaining about how the hygienes in the park are not what they used to be. And that used to be like a shining part of Disneyland. Is like you yeah. go th- That used to be a thing that people would say. You go to the park, you could eat off the floor. It's so clean there. That, right. uh, that's not the case anymore because they can't keep staff anymore because they pay their staff slave wages. Um, and uh, then with the Disney Plus stuff, now you just feel like you go... Or uh, with the Genie Plus stuff, rather, you just feel like you're going there to um, have money taken away from you. You don't feel like you're having a magi- magical experience anymore. 
you feel like they're just trying to rip you dry, which Disney all, always had a little element of that because, of course, uh-huh. they're a company first and foremost. Right. But you need that you need that magic, you know, to get me to give you my money. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you end up with people like me who are like, fuck Disney. I'm not going back after this time, you know. Um, right. And then on top of that, Universal Studios has been making moves and they're slowly overtaking Disney as park leaders uh, with the advancement of like Hogwarts, the Hogwarts mm-hmm. stuff. And now the the uh, Mario Land that's opening up and they're building more parks in different countries and stuff. And they're expanding in California as well. So it's just been like endless um, nonsense going on with Bob Chapek. So uh, that's my brief history. <laughs> that's my my history lesson with the with the Bobs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it makes total sense that they'd bring back Bob Iger. I have a feeling he's not going to be there for very long. My guess is he'll probably stick around for two years, right the ship, pick a guy, mm-hmm. mentor that guy or girl. Uh, to take over yeah. wouldn't it be yeah. wild if it was kathleen kennedy um that would be wild dude because as much That'd as be... we hate kathleen kennedy a huge fan of kathleen kennedy is bob Iger. so yeah to, but to be fair for kathleen kennedy she's all things star wars and she may have said too many things or done too many things wrong but she's also been around for some other good stuff you know there's also good things that she's also done but all in all, just fuck Kathleen Kennedy. You know what I mean? I, I agree. I, I think she's better served as like a producer uh, like for a movie rather than like... I think for the position she has, you need a bit of a more of a creative edge, sort of like Kevin Feige, mm-hmm. where he's right. a bit more of a creative uh, as yeah. well as a, a good leader, where I think Kathleen Kennedy yeah. is a bit more hardlined which is like wh- mm. I, I almost feel like she would be good as like a, a replacement ceo because i think she wouldn't be in charge of like mm-hmm. like actually creatives making decisions yeah. she would just yeah. be hiring creatives because she is good at hiring creatives right because if you right. look at it she did hire lord and miller she fired them as well but those are good creatives she did mm-hmm. hire ryan johnson people hate where it went but he is a great creative you know mm-hmm. like so she's good yeah. at letting people you know, and, and finding people, it's just, uh, I think as the head of Star Wars, not, yeah. not, not great, <laughs> but yeah, no. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think Bob is going to, Bob Iger is going to be there very long, but, uh, no, 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 I think you're right. I think he's just there to right right the wrongs and yeah. fix some shit. Hopefully he can turn a whole bunch of stuff around like the, the parks, um, Parks are a main f- thing, I think. Fix that stupid ass Disney genie bullshit. Um, oh, let's not forget as well with on top of the Disney Plus stuff with with Chapek. If mm-hmm. you remember the Scarlett Johansson stuff. Oh yeah. With Pla- Black oh, yeah. Widow, like that was a huge snafu. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, the stuff with the Pixar movies being exclusively on Disney Plus, uh, to the point yeah. where uh, this is rumors, but. Uh, a bunch of the creatives allegedly uh, planned walkouts uh, on behalf of that, especially when that movie Turning Red came out, because uh, mm-hmm. they th- they felt it got buried on Disney Plus by not being released in theaters. Um, so the the theory also what I what I heard, and this is unsubstantiated by anyone. I, I just heard this on uh, John Campia's podcast just a second ago, actually, and he also said like this is allegedly, uh, but. Um, apparently, uh, the heads of, uh, Disney, uh, studios, which would be like the guys who make the live action Disney stuff, uh, Uh the guys who, uh, Kevin Feige, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, uh, the head of Pixar all went, uh, to the shareholders and said, if you don't do something about Bob Chapek, we're all walking. Um, Uh so yeah, yeah. So pretty wild stuff and the dude wasn't even there for two years <laughs> pretty pretty crazy. wild. crazy seems like a, a bad pick in the first place yeah which i think is why bob is back bob Iger is back because he's like i fucked up i shouldn't have picked him mm-hmm. yeah 
Um, and who, who, maybe he, maybe, yeah, maybe it was one of those things like he didn't show his true colors until it got to the tunnel and right. fake it till you make it sort of thing. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, like he was good at running the parks when he had someone over him to make sure he was mm-hmm. rained down, but then he takes control. And I do think a big part of being the head of Disney in particular, as opposed to other companies, uh, yeah. is you need a little bit of creative edge oh, when yes. you're the head of Disney. Like Walt Disney, right? He was a yeah. bu- he was a business genius, but he was also an artistic genius because right. you know he cared about the art and what the art was bringing, and that's what made him so successful. Same with Michael Eisner. Same with Bob Iger. Bob Iger mm. wasn't originally like a CEO type. He was a he was a news anchor for sports, <laughs> and that right. And he also bought ESPN. Good, good shocker there. Uh, but yeah. Um, Anyway, this is why this show is called LonerCast, because I just need somewhere to be alone to talk about this shit. <laughs> hey, man, I'm with you. I'm right here with you. Thanks, man. I appreciate We're it. In it. We're in it together. <laughs> Last thought, though, before we move on to MPD numbers. Uh, uh-huh. My conspiratorial brain, though, makes me think he picked Bob Chapek, and Bob Chapek knew he'd be the fall guy, because uh, he knew COVID was coming, and he's like, we're going to uh, look terrible during oh. COVID. He knew COVID was coming. Okay. He's like, COVID's going to fuck us. Uh-huh. Well, because he stepped down right like a week before lockdown started happening. Mm, could be. It's like... Could be. Yeah. Coincidence. And now things are opening up. Things are just starting to stabilize a bit. And he's mm-hmm. back. I don't know. Seems a little, little, little fishy. A little sus. A little, little sus. sus. <laughs> What's going on there, Bobby? Uh... Anyway, I'm excited he's back. I'm I, I'm not like too optimistic that he'll actually fix everything though. Uh, we'll see. Any any final thoughts there, Nick? No. No. Not a one. Not a one. Not a one. Bring back James Gunn. That's all I gotta say. Hey. Nah, he's good over at DC. Stay over he's at DC. Fine. Yeah, I mean, DC is in a rough spot. Yeah, they need, they've been they in a rough spot James for Gunn. a long time. They need James Gunn because he gets it, yeah. right? They need him more than. But you know, there might be like other people that have left other than James Gunn who will come back. To, oh yeah, uh, for sure. Fix everything. Fix like you, who knows? Maybe uh, Black Widow. What's her name? Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Scarlett Johansson will come back, and she'll. Well, you maybe know- this is the whole thing. You know what's funny about the Scarlett Johansson situation was, um, you know, she ended up like trying to sue them and they mm-hmm. ended settling it out, out of court. And right after that right. happened, it was announced that she's doing like five Disney movies. So really? Oh, no. yeah. So she, I think she went in there. And she's like, I want like hella work and I want to get hella paid for it after what you fucking did. Yeah, me. could be. Um, could be just to right the wrongs. Yeah. Um. Anyway, could you imagine if like Kevin Feige left during Bob Chapek and then went over to DC and took over as like creative head of DC? That'd be insane. That would have been wild. I don't know. I Maybe don't know. he doesn't even like DC because DC's bad anyway. He so. talks about he he said he loves DC. So <laughs> oh okay, well then never mind. I I I believe him. And he's always said a healthy DC is good for Marvel because it makes them work harder, you know. And I agree mm-hmm. with him. So yeah. No, yeah, it makes sense. You got to keep stepping it up, right? Yep. Uh, let's get into the MPD numbers here, Nick. I went way uh-huh. longer on that than I thought I would, but... Well, that's fine. That's what we do. <laughs> that's what we're here that's for, who, baby. That's what we're here for. Now, I don't need to make a video. I could just we're post this as a good stuff. video. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> uh, here are the MPD, MPD numbers. These are the top 10 selling games of October. At number one, no surprise here, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Wow, I am so surprised. Kind of surprised here. At number two is Gotham Knights. Yeah. At number three is FIFA 23. At number mm-hmm. four is Madden NFL 23. At number okay. five is NHL 23. Hey, okay. good for three you, Canadians. Three sports games in a row. Yeah. Good for you, Canadians. You're on there. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Number six is Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. At oh, number okay. seven, jumping up from number 291 is Persona 5. Because got- it came out on the Switch, yeah. Yeah, got and the P- PC as well. And, and PC, yeah. Um, yeah, and then at number eight is NBA 2K23. At number nine 
is Bayonetta 3. And at number 10 is Elden Ring. That's slowly dropping. You think this will drop next month as well? We'll see. With a battle, though, to see who wins the end of the year. The end of the year? It's still, mm-hmm. it's still in effect because here are the top 10 selling video games year to date, uh-huh. 2022. At number one is still Elden Ring. Damn, Just couldn't ha- couldn't pull it ahead. Hanging on by a thread because at number two is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Couldn't couldn't get them. Couldn't get them on the first month. At number three is Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker they, Saga. They beat that though. Yeah. It's still crazy. impressive, man, that that game sailed so well. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. At number four is Madden NFL 23. At number five is Pokemon Legends Arceus. At number six yeah. is Horizon 2 Forbidden West. Number seven, MLB The Show 22. Number eight, FIFA 23. Number nine, Call of Duty Vanguard. Yeah. Still up there, man. Still there. Still up there. Still there. Number 10, Gran Turismo 7. You know what's not on this list? Yes. Yes, I do. Not on either list. But you know you know it's going to be on next month's list? I do. Yeah. Mario Kart 8. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, because it, it it got a new pack just recently, yeah. didn't it? So no, oh, it's December. Comes out December. I hear it's good. I hear it's got a yeah. lot of good classic maps on there. It looks pretty good. I stay released a trailer as well. Uh, looks looks fairly good. Uh, still no new characters. We don't get to play as the green edgy guy from Mario Rabbids. Mm. Uh, but you know we can't all be winners. That's true. That's true. You're right. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick, let me ask you a question. Now, this is yes. really important. Okay. Uh huh. I've never asked you a more important question. Uh huh. What you been playing? Oh man, I've been playing some Call of Duty. Uh, but that's old news. Old news. What I've been recently hey, playing. Warzone did just come out, so. Yeah, but I haven't played that. Oh, you haven't tried? Um, no, I not even a little bit. Me either. Um, what I have been playing though is uh pokemon violet and scarlet pokemon more specifically violet because everybody loves the penis one it's the penis um, one. yeah it's the penis one and will always be the penis one in my mind um they can't stop me um all i can say so far is don't believe the reviews too much or the memes online too much because i haven't run into those kind of situations where you kind of like fall through the map or like it's the bugs are so bad. You can't tell what, what the ground is or, you know, nothing like that. I have not run into a bug like that. Don't get me wrong. The game is muddy. It looks framey as shit. The, uh, the characters animations are really bad, but the Pokemon themselves look pretty good. The fight look, the fighting looks pretty good. The animations in the fight, the, uh, the UI, pretty freaking good. I like the UI a lot. I like the upgrades that they did. Um, it's fun so far. So far, so good. It's fun. What I know you've been playing it. Yeah, I haven't put that much time into it. Uh, just like two hours. Uh, just got right up to the school and that's about it. Um, okay. But just getting right up to the school, I'm like, yeah, this game is fucking ugly. The shadows are like, mm-hmm. yeah. Just, oh, I don't even know why they put shadows in. The yeah, game. right. Exactly. Why is there like, like a like a sun, like a beautiful looking sun? It's like, yeah, this game is the, the lighting is killing your game. I think. Yeah. Um, they. It really is. It really is. And then it rains, and it's like, ooh, okay. Yeah. Just don't. Just don't do just that. Why? Yeah. It's unnecessary. Shadows are hugely unnecessary because they're hardly existent in the game in any way indeed i agree um but yeah i haven't played it that much i did pick the duck i named him donnie i love him Mm. um i love donnie i've seen his evolution and he's fabulous and i love him Uh, i uh i picked fue coco uh, guys and uh he's got nothing going on up there and i love that for him and yeah 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 he's he's a doom he's a doofus um, but I also yesterday I was just playing around for a little bit before I had to drop somebody off at the airport and I freaking caught a shiny uh Growlithe. Oh yeah, that's right. You sent that, yeah. So Love that's that. freaking crazy, right? That's like one of my only shinies I've ever caught. I think I've caught one more. 
That's before. also like one of my favorite Pokemon. Period. Oh, that's cool. I love Growlithe. It's, he's great. Yeah, a lot of people like Growlithe a lot. He's cool. He's a fire dog. Fire, fire dog guy. He's a fire dog. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the conversation though has been like, you know, whose fault is it? Is it Game Freak or is it Nintendo because the Switch is bad? Um, I think ultimately it's Game Freak's fault. But like, at the same time, I don't necessarily want to take the 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 blame away from Nintendo because I do think like if this was running on anything other than the Switch, it would be okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. I agree. People I don't being, know if it's any. People I think. Too I think it's. I think it's the. What what is it called? It's the hubris between behind the Pokemon Company and Nintendo of like, oh, we don't need to put that much effort into this game. We'll just uh, release it and it'll sell gangbusters, and it already has. It's already performed crazy amounts of numbers. I hear. Um, and it does but feel it, more ambitious than like previous titles. So yeah, I'll it's give it, it, it is kind of everything culminating together from the last couple of iterations that they have. Uh, although I do wish they would stick to one like mega evolution sort of thing, like either make it mega <laughs> evolution, yeah, make right? it Gigantamax, or make it terrestrializing. It's literally the same goddamn thing it, every um, time, and I hate that. It's like, why does this? Why do they even need to do that? Do they need to have one extra step? I hate that. I, I find it really annoying. No, they just want to um, be like fucking Bayonetta or Bayonetta. I mean, Persona and, you know, have their special abilities or whatever. They don't need it. They don't need it. Just fight with the Pokemon. Yeah, it's Pokemon. They don't need to be like, oh, it can go into fire mode now. And it's it's stupid. It's yeah. so dumb. Um, I will say like after playing just a little bit, it's like there are some things that I miss from Arceus that I wish were in there specifically when you do a battle and you could actually run around the battle and like, mm-hmm. it just looked so cool in Arceus. That but might I'm, be I'm like, too. Why, why'd they take it away, man? It might be too demanding on the poor, uh, 16, 17 year old switch. Yeah. yeah maybe. Oh, <laughs> the 16 year old switch i mean the the shit that built the switch is real old it was outdated when the switch was outdated as soon as it came out so it's even more outdated now yeah there's that and i do miss i miss like just throwing a pokeball at a pokemon and catching it but i understand why that's not in there because it's not there's like- auto there's auto battle. I like the, cool. I like the auto battling. That's mm-hmm. a cool idea. It's very yeah. that's a cool idea. Um and I like that you can actually see the pokemon, you know, like just have random encounters. Uh that's pretty cool. That's I think that's huge actually for my enjoyment yeah. of the game. So Uh also to get back to Call of Duty real quick, mm-hmm. just for a second. Uh-huh. Let's let's just jump back into it. Yeah. Um I did not play Warzone 2.0, but I did look at the battle pass and said, "What the fuck am I looking at?" And then, then just sort of looked away. Like, why is it like that? Why is the battle um, pass like that? I fucking hate that game so much, dude. Because then it's also like, oh, you want to upgrade this gun? You got to upgrade this thing. But if you want this attachment, I, you have to upgrade I this see. other thing. It's like I, I, I like understand that. why they did that, so you're forced to use different things. But if they made it a little bit easier to navigate, I just feel like it's so confusing. Especially when it's yeah. like a gun is called like a an STQ thirty two hundred sixty five. I'm like, yep, I don't know yep, what the yep, fuck yep, that means. Yep. I don't know where to find that. I don't know what that is. Yeah, um, that is annoying. Um, and the battle pass, I don't understand it at all. I don't even know what I'm looking. It's at. just a. It's just a. It's not a linear thing anymore. It's you can choose where you're going to go on the battle pass. That's all it is. It's nodes rather than. You unlock this at level three. You unlock this at level twenty-seven. It's you can unlock this. You you kind of like it's like, kind of like a splash thing where you you do one node and then you can go to the adjacent nodes, whatever nodes touching. Then you go to that one, and then once you complete that one, you can go to those two adjacent nodes. It's just a branching like tree of. Uh, I hate it. I don't like it at all. Okay, it's too well. confusing. 
I, you're you're just an idiot. So that is true. So there you go. Um, <laughs> no, it's I I agree with you with the weapon names. Uh, the, or like the, just like if you allow me, if there's like a little button, like when you're, it's like hey, you need this to upgrade. If I could just scroll up and click that, and it brings me to the gun that I need, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. I agree. Hundred percent. They need to do that. They need to put in like filters because if I'm trying to put on like a weapon skin, there's no filter for like owned and unowned. And there's like 300, 400 weapon skins. And it's like, I got to scroll through all of this just to equip a weapon skin. And if I change the weapon, I got to find that skin again. It's there. There's a lot of quality of life stuff that needs to improve. With also it. like, you know how, if you're adjusting your equipment, within a game like you're in a in a match Uh and you go to Mm -hmm. change your attachments it just brings up the the easy bar to change it uh uh-huh just put that in the do that i agree i hate looking like i don't want to look at the gun you know until it's like i I don't want to like click all these just put it in a bar it's so much simpler and easier better to look at 100 percent, 100 percent. that was just like uh when the playstation uh trophy system was all fucked up and like yeah. But they they fix it, uh. Yeah, man. A a simple UI goes a long way. But you know who cares? Yep. This game's making a gajillion dollars. They don't give a shit. Yep. It will sell gangbusters. There's gangbusters again, um, for a while. Um, speaking of selling for a while, let's talk about <laughs> open crit. I don't know what that means. Uh, okay. Recent reviews via Open Critic. Evil West got a seventy six from thirty six critic reviews. Uh, Pokemon, uh, Violet, whatever, got a 77 <laughs> from 38 critic reviews. And it's really only that low because of uh, performance issues. Like performance if, it didn't, issues. if it didn't have the, that shit, it would be fine. I feel like if it came out on anything other than the Switch, it would it would be one of the best Pokemon games out yeah, there. Yeah, I did love Arceus though. Great game. Uh, Dark Pictures Anthology, The Devil and Me, got a 74 from 51 critic reviews. Uh, and Pentiment, this was like the surprise breakout of last week was Pentiment, yeah. mm-hmm. which got an 86 from 84 critic reviews. I really got to check this game out. Uh, People seem to like it. I hear it has a slow start, but once you get into it, it is like one of those great games. Yeah. Uh, nice. I haven't played it myself. Yeah, uh, I'll play it maybe one day, except I'm playing The Witcher now, so... Yeah, obviously. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard to do. I can't play anything anymore. Uh, no, you're, you're trapped. Yeah, uh, so audience discussion. I've got something for you here, Nick. Okay. I saw this video, right? And I wish I could pull this video up. But okay. I can't, I, I can't, because my setup is weird right now. But mm-hmm. I saw this video about this guy talking about how the game awards are rigged. I don't know if you saw this video going around Twitter. I did not see this video. And this guy was just like the, the game awards are rigged. Uh, how, how is stray nominated, but Pentiment isn't. And what the cutoff date doesn't make sense. And no, it doesn't. Right. Uh, I just want to bring that up just because I want to say this, I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to say it clearly no my stance mm-hmm. on this. Okay. Your stance on this. The stance on this video that no one knows what I'm talking about, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, is uh, the Game Awards are not about the awards, and they never have been. No. The no. cutoff date is one month before the event, so people can get their votes in or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's an arbitrary date because they set it up for what the best day is for these companies to drop sponsor reveals. Yep. That's all it is. Oh. Of course, it's all set up. It's all. Does that mean yeah. it's corrupt? Not necessarily. Um, I you know I don't think the awards matter anyway. Uh, but no, you know if you're worried about something like that, go watch the Dice Awards. You know, yeah, nobody's n- nobody's watching the Game Awards for the actual awards. It is the end of the year event in which we get new game announcements, right? And we get to watch. Um, Hideo Kojima just completely uh, get simped on by um, 
what's his face? Jeff, Jeff Keighley. Keighley. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We get to, we get to see that. So, you know, that's what we're there for. Nobody gives a shit about the, the award giving out ceremony other than maybe the people who are there to play the music. You know, when they always have like this really cool like ensemble to play the game of the years music in this really interesting oh, way. Yeah, that is cool. Th- that's it. You know, yeah. that's the whole thing. I and of course it's the game awards. Jeff Keeley's in it. He's going to pick Elden Ring because Jeff Keeley is the uh all father to video game awards. So sorry, God of War. Uh, you just went in on the wrong year. Yeah. Well, they were talking about how, you know, they don't understand how the voting board works. And it's like, I don't know. I don't really either. But I understand why it's there and like why it exists. Um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Not the thing. None of this matters. Yeah. Words are for children. Mm-hmm. Play the game you want. And the funniest thing was he was complaining about Stray being nominated. This is a mediocre cat game and Pentiment not being nominated. And it's like, dude, you're shitting on the indie game that got nominated. Yeah. So then Pentiment, the game owned by Microsoft, gets like, yeah. it's insane. <laughs> it's just stupid. The stupidest take I've ever heard in my life. Um, anyway, we're starting to lose Nick. His internet's going out. So <laughs> next week in games, Evil West comes out on everything except for the Switch on November 22nd. Uh, Gungrave Gore comes to everything except for the Switch on November 22nd. Just Dance 2023 comes out on everything. Well, oddly, just PS5, Xbox Series, and the Switch uh, on November 22nd. And Ship of Fools comes out on new next-gen consoles as well and the Switch November 22nd. That's interesting. We're starting to see that. Um, That's literally every game that's coming out next week this week it's a slow one it's a slow it's week a slow one boys i mean we just had god of war we had a pokemon like yeah everyone we like, need right. we need a we need a break we need a breather we need mm-hmm. everybody go play games that uh, are in your backlog i guess if you have them if that's even possible right now yeah uh make sure you check out our other learner cast shows we do a spoiler cast we just did wakanda forever definitely go watch that it's a mm-hmm. great review perhaps the greatest review you'll ever see of Wakanda Forever. It's the greatest review I've ever seen. Yeah. Of Wakanda Forever. Definitely. 100%. Uh, uh, check me out on Twitter at emergency pizza underscore. Still trying to decide if I want to keep it. I mean, fuck, man. Eld- uh, Eldon. Elon just like posted like, oh, if you're a gatekeeper, you should leave Twitter. And I'm like, bitch, fucking try- tempt me, bitch. Tempt me. Make me, bitch. Um, I'm just waiting for like a different platform to come up. Like what's the platform to go to besides Twitter? You know, like what's the one everyone's jumping to? Apparently there's called Mastodon. Yeah. People seem to like Mastodon. I don't uh, know. I haven't seen it. Jack Dorsey, the former creator of C the former CEO of Twitter is like making something called like sky or something. Um, so we'll see what fucking happens there anyway. Um, check out the show if you want just like updates on the show at Lonercast one uh, and check out Nick at fatal underscore microwave uh, he posts a lot of dick pics over there uh, ton, yep. tons of them sure. tons of them 100%. Uh, ch- and of course watch the show on YouTube look up Lonercast on YouTube uh, find us on podcast services by searching uh, last week in games uh, and watch us live at twitch.tv slash lunarcast. Mort Sith Alice in the, in the chat says, uh, I, I never watch those awards. And that's, I feel like most people don't. So just some like weird gamer boys like us. And we yeah. don't watch them for the awards because no one watches the dice awards. If it's just awards, no one cares. You know? Absolutely. No one gives a shit. We're just there to see Death Stranding too. Like that's all we care about. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's the show. Bye, everybody.